And we're back. I'm your host, Noel Muro. Trilosophy.com. Another episode of Boxing on the Go. Pretty interesting, uh, pretty exciting, uh, exciting card we had last Saturday, right? Uh, live from the Ford Center at the Star in Frisco, Texas, which is also known as the Dallas Cowboys practice facility. You had a <clears throat> pretty stacked card. You had uh, Joseph Parker coming out with the win um, over Shondell Terrell Winters. Uh, an absolute banger between uh, Julio Cesar Martinez and Jay Harris. Uh, man, that was... Um, I'm not sure if I've ever seen Jay Harris fight. But, man, he went in 17-0. And, and, man, the, the guy could fight. The guy is very exciting to watch. Uh, Julio Cesar Martinez did an... <clears throat> he did an amazing job as well getting that that win over Jay Harris. Um, also, it was uh, the return of the king, Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez. Uh Gets a TKO win in round nine over Khalid Yafai. He improves to 49 and two. And I mean, that was probably the, not probably, let's just say that was the, the, the fight of, of the night. I mean, just, I mean, Chocolatito came back. He looked very refreshed. He looked like he never lost a step. Um, Cal Yafai did his best to hang in there with the, with the veteran and um and uh yeah couldn't bang it out with him and um and wins the WBA super world super flyweight title so congratulations to Chocolatito which I also do want to mention um this morning on Twitter I saw uh uh Srisuket so Rungvisai came out with a video congratulating Chocolatito and uh, also, you know, um, um, being being happy for uh, Gallo Estrada. Just, you know, uh, wishing them both the best and that he hopes to see them again. <laughs> so, um, I mean, Trisaket So Rungvisai, uh, I mean... I mean, he lost to Estrada. What, like uh, two two years ago, almost almost two years ago, February two thousand eighteen. Is that what it was? I believe so. So uh, he's been, you know, steadily just, you know, racking up a couple wins. Uh, he's still ranked really high, if, if I'm not mistaken, on the world boxing rankings. Uh, he's ranked number one, and Gallo Estrada is ranked uh you know champion so we could see a trilogy between him and gallo estrada you could get uh chocolatito versus estrada which looks like uh that seems to be the way the waves are going towards so i mean i mean those are i mean that's an excellent matchup but i mean with so rung still lurking in there he smells blood in the water. He's uh I don't know, he looks like he's coming coming for the coming for the top guys, so be on the lookout for that. Mikey Garcia versus Jesse Vargas in a welterweight bout to headline the card in Texas. Mikey Garcia looked uh, a lot more comfortable at the welterweight uh, level. Looks, I mean, he's had he's had a lot of time to grow into the weight, to walk around with the weight, um, a lot more time to to train in that weight. So uh, let's just kiss uh, one thirty five goodbye. I I just I don't see Mikey going back down to one thirty five. It's um. I don't see it. It's uh, he's already jumped up the two weight classes. I mean, performed pretty well. 
at 140, so he could still bang him out at 140. Um, so, I mean, just just like everybody else, I mean, I'm still going to think that he shouldn't. If he wants to fight Manny Pacquiao at 147, I think uh, that's um, – that is uh, – I think he has a shot at beating Manny Pacquiao. People might think I'm crazy, but uh, Manny Pacquiao is not a huge 147-pounder. He's been – at that weight for a very long time, but, uh, he did move up in weight, um, you know, several, several times in his career. So, um, they're both about the same height. Uh, Jesse Vargas was at 5'11", going in there, like probably weighing 160 on fight night. Um, I don't know what the exact weights were on fight night or if they even released those numbers, but, uh, you know, I mean, Jesse Vargas was a very tough competitor uh, last Saturday. Uh, came out, I mean, straight up just trying to win rounds. I mean, he he, he wasted no time. Um, I mean, Jesse was still a difficult fight. And, you know, and I'll still defend Jesse Vargas. I think he's still, um, I don't, I don't want to say a top welterweight. He was going to can- start campaigning at 154. I don't know how hard it is for him to how hard it is for him to um to make 147 um maybe he's growing out of out of 147 i don't know if he i don't think he's bursting at the seams i think he could still make it but i don't know um when he comes back i mean look the 154 division is wide open titles are being titles are being lost titles are being won back and forth you know it's 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 a that's an exciting division. Um, there should be a lot of money there, and uh, Jesse Vargas can um, look to campaign there and probably be successful. You know, him versus Jason Rosario or whoever. You know, um, those you know bunch of those guys are PBC guys, if not all of them, all the champions over there. But um, but yeah, uh, Mikey. Uh, if he if he gets Pacquiao next in Saudi Arabia, that's what look that's what it looks like they're trying to do. Um, I mean, Mikey had that strong right hand in the in the fifth round that took Jesse down, and Jesse got up, real, you know, champion stuff. You know, the guy is uh, the the guy got up, and you know the the fight could have been ended right there, but. Uh, you know, got saved by the bell. But going back to Mikey versus Pacquiao in Saudi Arabia, that'd be a, a big fight. They're gonna pay a lot of money for that fight. Uh, so why not do it, right? So um, now that's just a uh, big um, you know, promoter issues. You know, um, Pacquiao is signed to the PBC and Al Heyman, and obviously um. Well, no, Mikey, I mean, he's on he fought at the zone. I think I believe it was a one fight deal with the with the opportunity to be able to uh, for for the doors to be open for him to to uh fight more fights on the zone. So uh he seemed to be pretty happy with the promotion. Um uh, he liked the way that they were treating him over there, so I mean, Mikey is still quote unquote uh, free agent, so I mean, where, wherever they decide to uh, negotiate that fight, if it happens, I think it'd be great. I think Mikey can put him up with uh, um, uh, Pacquiao 147. So, so yeah, I'd like to see that. If that fight doesn't happen, there's a lot of uh, you know, if he goes de- back down to 140, you know, he'll be stronger, I believe. And there's a bunch of champions there you have uh you know regis pro gray former world champion lost to josh taylor you have josh taylor josh taylor uh current world champion uh you have jose ramirez right there but um i believe uh mikey and jose and have you know they've stated or robert garcia has stated that that they won't be fighting each other just because um i mean Robert trains both of them. Robert is Mikey's uh, brother slash trainer, and also, like I said, 
trains Jose Ramirez. So we'll see what happens. Um, also, it was announced uh, by DAZN that it will expand to over 200 countries and territories. Uh, big move for DAZN. I'm I'm not I'm not that keen on on uh, programming and uh, the programming business and and all that. But if um, they made that big push for it to be available in the U.S., now it's going to be. If it's expanding to over 200 countries and territories, that seems to be going uh, in their favor, in the right direction. They're expanding. Um, I know people in the UK have been uh, having to, you know, either uh, have subscribed to uh, Sky Sports and uh, BT Sport, and um, a lot of those, a lot of the fights over there. Um, and the fights here, I mean, at least they'll have access to anything that. I believe goes on here. Uh, Golden Boy, um, Golden Boy Promotions, Matro, Matroom Boxing, and um, yeah, and then they'll they'll have uh, the the access to the DAZN app to be able to just pay a, I believe said uh, four ninety nine euros or pounds um, per month. What what it was uh, reported, I believe. Um, I think uh, Michael Benson said that on Twitter, but uh, we'll see where that goes. And uh, moving on, um, Canelo still looking for an opponent. It's uh, it's Tuesday, March third, and uh, yesterday I saw a little video. Um, uh, from Fino Boxing, Adriana Jimenez was uh, talking to Eddie Reynoso, and uh, he's he believes. Well, he said, I mean, I don't want to quote him, but something along the lines of he thinks that the opponent will be announced either today, Tuesday, March third, or Wednesday, March fourth. Um, ESPN Deportes also tweeted that yesterday that uh billy joe saunders is the opponent um it has not spread that tweet has not spread like wildfire so i don't know if that's um if they're just trolling or what what they're doing so um so yeah i mean i mean may is just around the corner i mean like what two months from now now yeah just a little under two months um yeah, I mean these guys need, you know, I'm I'm sure all these guys are already in camp, not a formal camp, but they they're they're staying in shape. Canelo is looking that I mean from what it's been reported that Canelo wants either Billy Joe Saunders and Ka- or Callum Smith, and so that's between Golden Boy Promotions and and Matchroom Boxing, so uh Oscar and Eddie Hearn. <clears throat> So uh, we'll have to just uh, wait and see when they announce that, and uh, people can people can make uh, start buying tickets, make hotel reservations. As we all know, it should be at the T-Mobile Arena on May second, Cinco de Mayo weekend in Las Vegas. Wilder, uh, Deontay Wilder has uh, exercised his right to a trilogy fight. Um. It was in his contract that he does have a rematch clause, so we looks like we are going to see Wilder Fury three in July. All right, it's gonna be in Vegas. I mean, once again, Tyson comes over here. Bunch of Brits are gonna, bunch of people are gonna come over from the from the pond. He's made a lot of fans here. I mean, I mean, Tyson Fury was living in Vegas throughout his camp. I mean, I think he feels comfortable in, in Vegas like a second home. So I mean, you know, it's it's not a it's not home field you know, it's almost like home field advantage, even though, you know, he's a Brit and this is the US, but it don't matter. The Gypsy King came and conquered. Wilder came out with the video saying uh that the war has just begun, quote unquote. 
and he wants he will regain the title that he'd rather die in the ring and uh, reports are that he will not fire uh, Mark Breland I will reiterate he needs to get another trainer a world class trainer in that camp and help him out because uh, it sure looked like uh, Tyson Fury had his number I'm also saying I mean Deontay Wilder's power is still going to be there still going to have that right hand that eraser and that can if he lands that it's night night Tyson Fury possibly the guy got up last time remember from two knockdowns so I mean I mean Tyson Fury I just I mean it's a tough son of a bitch so it is what it is um so yeah so that should be exciting there's a lot of people that don't want to see that why first one was a draw yeah Tyson Fury I believe won that fight if it wasn't just for those two knockdowns you know but you know if they fight again Tyson Fury wins again uh you know by knockout TKO or unanimous decision maybe then Deontay Wilder will have to move on to a different trainer or you know I mean he's going to go down the ranks he'll have to rebuild himself up again we'll see what happens so also uh announced I believe yesterday, um, Anthony Joshua versus Kubrat Pulev, June 20th for the IBF, WBA, WBO Heavyweight Championship of the World at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in London, England. Uh, Kubrat Pulev coming in at 28-1. and one. Only got only lost one time by knockout by Vladimir Klitschko in 2014, about six years ago. So, um, I've seen him fight. Um, he seems like a pretty tough opponent. You know, Anthony Joshua doesn't have the best chin in the world. He's he's been put down several times. Um, he can get hurt. Uh, Kubrat Pulev has been knocked out before, just one time. So, we'll see how that fight goes. Um, back over there, overseas, across the pond, back in Anthony, Anthony Joshua's backyard. So, a lot of good fights coming up. Um, uh, Andy Ruiz looking to uh, um, announce his next opponent here pretty soon. Uh, people seem to speculate that it is Luis King Kong Ortiz. That is a dangerous fight. For anybody, King Kong is always in the fight. Um, even at his age, it doesn't matter. It's, that's uh, um, also reports are saying um, Ant- Andy Ruiz. Uh, <clears throat> I think uh, what's his name? Uh, Adam Kanowski, 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 or Kaunaki. How oh, some people want to uh, pronounce it. Uh, he has a fight coming up, I believe, this Saturday. Um, I'll have to recheck that. But uh, if he wins, it looks like um, the reports are saying that it'll be Andy Ruiz versus Adam Kanowski um, for the summer. Um, has Andy Ruiz even found a new trainer? It looks like he's working out. He's, uh, you know, putting up. Lots of pictures on Instagram, you know, uh, promoting uh, CBD lines and uh, Fashion Nova pictures and um, and training. Just, just it does show that he is training in some sort of way. Let's see if Andy Ruiz can uh, prove everyone wrong, come back and win a world title or world titles at heavyweight um, in the near future, but. That is uh, that is yet to be seen, and I'm very curious to see uh, which trainer uh, he's going to have going into his next fight. This Saturday, also, we got Scott Quigg versus John O'Carroll. That's going to be a, a hell of a matchup. These guys, uh, both young, you know, small, young scrappers, 
Um, that's going to be on Saturday as well as the UFC. Uh, UFC 248, Israel Adesanya, Adesanya uh, versus Yoel Romero. Man, that's, I mean, that is a scrap right there. Uh, Yoel Romero, the veteran, older dude, but still very dangerous. Uh, Joe Rogan says no one ever calls out Yoel Romero, so Adesanya is a, is a is a brave dude for calling him out. He's the world he's the world champion right now, and um, he's looking to uh, to challenge himself, and that's that's admirable. You also have uh, Wei Li Zhang Zhang uh, versus Joanna Jane Jacek. We'll just call her Joanna. Um, uh, looks like they're they're fighting for the a world title as well. And uh, see if Joanna can get back to uh, championship status. We'll see what happens. All right. Well, that's what I got for you guys today. You can follow me on Twitter at Moruso71, M O R U S O 71 on Twitter. Follow Trilosophy at the Trilosophy uh, Instagram page at Trilosophy. Check out Trilosophy.com. If you like this podcast, like, subscribe, comment. Do what you need to do, guys. Please. Thanks.